Hello everybody, uh, JP Game here, and today we're going to be playing sort of a different game. This game is called Roblox Titanic, um, and for those who don't know what Roblox is, it's basically a game platform where people can create worlds like this, and then you can jump in it with a bunch of friends, uh, and just kind of hang out and stuff. So today we're going to be looking at this game. Uh, this is one of my favorite games to play. Uh, so let's kind of walk around the ship. Let's start with the bow. Alright, this, this is the floor capsule deck right here. Um, so we're going to kind of look around the ship before it starts sinking. Uh, so here is a B deck. Not much to see on B deck. And then A deck, you have the uh, A deck promenade. <clears throat> Excuse me. A deck promenade deck. Um, that's that. Um, originally on the Olympic, uh, they had a permanent deck on B deck also, but they said it wasn't used as much, so they just took it out on the Titanic. So here's the bridge. This is the telegraph where they control the speed of the ship, uh, the helm, and then here's the wheelhouse. These would be flags. The, uh, watertight door panel, the phones to call, like, the crow's nest and stuff. It's supposed to be a chart room. I don't know if it's open like this or not. I'm not, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But here we have uh, crew cabins or officers' quarters. This would be first officer, second, or no, that would be chief officer. This would be first, second, and on and on. Um, one of the more interesting things is the wireless room or the Marconi telegraph. Right now, it doesn't have all its stuff here. But those have the bunk, and here would be the silent room where all the kind of electronic stuff would be. Um, I believe this is the cruise mess. So let's go ahead and step out onto the grand staircase. Now, as you can see, this is very highly detailed. They put a lot of work into this. Uh, usually on Roblox, you see more blocky stuff, but this is like all smooth and yeah, a lot of detail. So here's boat deck with all the lifeboats. Uh, a lot of action usually happens here. Here's A deck. Not much to see. There's no accommodations yet. Uh, B deck. C deck. There's the um, purses or inquiry office. And then here's the reception room. The uh, dining room is not in here yet. Uh, and then down here. We have E deck, we have a few accommodations, and then we have Scotland Road that lead to the boiler room. And here's the boiler room. It's pretty de very detailed, especially for Roblox. So let's go back up. Um, oh, and there's also one thing I want to show you before we start, you know, sinking. Elevators. There are ele working elevators too. There are, they all seem to be on. A deck. So let's go ahead and go up to one really quickly. Oh, here's A deck. Alright, so you can, you know, press the button up or down and then it takes you down. Usually it works best when only one person is in them because when there's more than two, it just kind of, <laughs> it just kind of lags a bit or slows down. Okay, so it looks like it's getting a bit darker, so let's go ahead and go up to boat deck so we don't miss any of the action. Yeah, the sun's setting. Um, no crew on the bridge. Seems I'm the only crew member. I don't know where the other person is. There is one more other person. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to the crow's nest. So here is the crow's nest, everybody. Uh, this is around what the view of the uh, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee. This is kind of the view what they would have. You look back onto the bridge, you see the funnels. <clears throat> now there there are some uh, things you can do called hacks, where you can kind of change the lighting. There's realistic lighting, which makes it a bit more realistic. You can see there's a uh, wrong, wrong button. Uh, there's black and white, which is pretty interesting if you want to like 
reenact stuff from the night to remember or something. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep it on normal for the purpose of this video. Maybe later we can do like a kind of more roleplay focus. This is more of a showcasing thing. So we're gonna, oh, it looks like our iceberg is about to show up. It looks like I can see a crew member on the bridge. Um, and there's some music and audio to this game. Iceberg right ahead! So I'll just let this kind of play out. She hits. Alright, so then she rolls by. Alright, so let's go down. Uh, in this game, you can actually see the boiler room is flooding, so I kind of we can go there. Oh, there's our crew officer. Survived many wars. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down to the boiler room, so then we can actually see the damage. Oh dear! So as you can see, there's kind of a particle effect of the water rushing in, which I think is really interesting. But yes, the water is rising, so we should probably get out of here. And I think this is boiler room number six. I think that's what this is supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah. You can actually turn on realistic water. More of a, like, clear... I don't know how to describe it. It just looks more realistic rather than just flat. What the heck? It doesn't seem to be working. There we go. Okay, so I just reset it. That seemed to work. Alright, so let's go down. As you can see, the water is more clear. Um, and more reflective. And colors are more dynamic, I guess. Go back up to boat deck and see if anything is happening. <clears throat> so right now, it says occur during necessary uh, preparations for the lifeboats. So this is kind of like a role-playing kind of game where you can role-play as crew. You can like dress up. Alright, so right now, the the boilers are venting their steam and it's coming out of the funnels creating a very loud noise. And in real life, this would cause the passengers to go back inside. They're just too cold and loud for them and they just, you know, they all want to stay in the warm room. It's just how humans are. Okay, so William, first officer. However, William Murdoch. Win by women and children first, not women and children only. That was late to her. Because <laughs> Murdoch was, he, he saved the like 70% of the population that was rescued. Because he, he didn't care. He let third class, second class, first class, anybody. And he went by like women and children first, and then if there's nobody else around. And there's room, then he would put men in. But Light Toller was strictly women and children only. And I think there was one point when he did say, you know, no more boys or no more young men. Oh, it 
looks like one of my friends showing. Let's say hi. <laughs> Probably doesn't know I'm recording right now. <laughs> Let's tell him. Oh, this ship is kind of starting to list. Oh, we need to <laughs> lower the boat, sir. Okay. Uh, everyone's probably going to want to talk to me now since I, I said I'm recording. Okay. Uh. Yes. Alright, so there is like kind of a time thing where you have to wait till you can set up the lifeboats. Uh, it makes it, it does make it more realistic since the first lifeboat wasn't actually launched till one hour after it struck the iceberg, which is kind of interesting. But again, like these old lifeboats, they took a while to to uh to set up because you had to uncover, you had to swing out the davits and untie all the oars and everything. It was it was kind of a it was it was a struggle. And that's probably one of the reasons why the the last two the last two collapsible lifeboats had to be literally floated off. Like that's how long they took. And when you think about it, if there was more lifeboats, like let's say oh, my phone's going off. Okay. Let's say if there were more lifeboats, then it would just they wouldn't be able to launch all of them because it would just, she was sunk in like two. Two hours and forty minutes. So, all right. So we, it looks like we can set up the boats now, and the, it is an interesting system. So you kind of lower the ropes. All right. So let's say lower away. All right, and then you both kind of try to keep the boat even, just like in real life. Which I think is uh, probably a really cool thing that they added. And you can see, like, you stop lowering on one side and keep lowering the other to just to keep it the. Just keep the boat even. As you can see, it looks like they're kind of messing up. Probably because only one person is doing it. That is this thing, it does. If, if, if you're, like, the only crew member in the game. Because only crew members are allowed to set up the boats. If you're like the only crew member, then it does kind of take a long time to launch all the boats, even impossible. But obviously this is faster than real life. I, I can't remember what the exact time was to set up and actually launch a lifeboat on Titanic. Okay, so as you can see... Uh, portholes are starting to dip underwater so the ship is definitely starting to sink there is a bit of its small list going on <clears throat> so we're gonna you know get everyone off the <laughs> okay uh, and an interesting about this game is that you can select the mode or how you want the ship to sink there's one version is like the, the 1912 what am i saying the uh 1997 movie version and obviously in that movie the ship sunk on a even keel i don't know how you say it but it didn't list port to starboard at all but the there's a 2012 theory where towards the end of the sinking she was listing more to port and she split in between the second and third funnel instead of the third and fourth to the port side now it looks like oh another cool detail is the um the third funnel is still smoking uh now when the ship started sinking they put the engines to stop which means they didn't need the boilers for 
the engines, but they did still need steam for the power. Because I'm pretty sure, I, I'm not entirely sure how this worked, but like the steam would power a generator, which powered the power. <laughs> um, so they still, yeah, they still needed to burn fuel for steam, and that that's probably one of the reasons why the third funnel is still smoking. And it basically smoked till around the end of the sinking. Alright, so it looks like the bow is uh, just almost submerged. Reception room is flooding. So let's go ahead and go down and check um, if, how much it's flooding. Okay, so if you look down the well, we can see that there's water at the bottom. Which means we are sinking. Okay, so there's water on E deck. Scotland Road is flooding. The elevator shafts are beginning to flood. Um, I really do like the color of this water. Um, I know most most testimonies kind of describe the water as being kind of a greenish water, and I think this kind of captures it well. Just the way it looks, how it's kind of green and... I don't know. Okay, so it looks like they've already started launching them. Um, oh dear. Um, I think the best, the best way to do this is launch the, the aft boats first, and then launch the, uh, the forward boats. Because when, when you launch the aft boats last, then there's just more, more to go down since it's higher up. And launching, if you launch forward boats to last, then, you know, it's quicker. And I think that's, that's kind of what they did on Titanic. I'm not entirely sure. I know on the port side, they, they launched a few, and then they went back here and launched these boats. And then they went back and launched the last couple boats there. And then on the port side was kind of the same. They launched these boats and then they came back here and then they launched the boats forward. So it looks like most of the white boats are gone. Um, water is consuming the bow. We have this cool park coal effect here, the water rushing. So yes, she's going down. Okay, so water's on B deck. If we look down the stairway, then we'll be able to see water. I remember in Light Toller's testimony, he said that he, um, he, he would occasionally come down to the stairway and then just look down and see the water rise up slowly. So, you know, now they would be launching the collapsible lifeboats. Um, It appears that the band is playing their last tune. So what happened to this boat? They pushed it off. It fell upside down. Um, and so, you know, it's, it was it would be hard to kind of pick that back over. So Lightoller, what he did, he kind of abandoned this lifeboat, and then he walked over to the starboard side, about over here. In this boat, they put oars to make kind of a ramp, and then they pushed it off, but the oars, oars kind of snapped as it went down. But it still landed um, right side up, and so they, they, what they would try to do is launch the lifeboat, so they would crank the dav, they crank the davits back, and on the wreck, the davit is cranked in the uh, tree position. I can't remember what it's called, and so they hook the falls up and everything. So uh, they were struggling here. It's kind of abandoned. So they hooked the falls up here, but then all of a sudden, the water would just kind of quickly rush over the bridge wings. And you know, it was it swept away most of the crew members. Only a few people were able to hold on. Uh, that's where they. That's where Blake Toller described everyone just got like swept away by water. Like it was it was this is this is doesn't really describe as much. But it was like really violent rushing water. Mm -hmm. 
and so they tried to free it up because they realized that oh we're not going to be able to launch this but it's still connected to the falls so it's going to sink with the ship if we don't cut them so they had to cut them but with a knife it wasn't really working out and so one of the officers i think it was wild chief officer wild um he, he shot the falls with his pistol and that kind of freed the lifeboat up and that's it, it released a bunch of tension so the lifeboat kind of like tipped over and dropped a bunch of people out and then stabled itself and it just kind of floated away after that uh fortunately this game does not have the script or it's not scripted to do that yet I hope it will in the future though. Because that's kind of an interesting event what happens. Struggle. Okay, so the Oh, it looks like we missed it with the uh the, the Grand Staircase funnel. Not funnel. <laughs> the Grand Staircase dome just just uh burst in it through. Because once, once the water went over the bridge, it just basically plummeted really fast. Like this, this would be the last 10 minutes. It only took around 10 minutes after that, I think. I remember watching the real-time sinking video, which is really interesting. I would recommend it. Out. And that, that, the smoke from the third funnel almost represents the life of those engineers, you know, keeping the power going. It's very sad how they stay behind until the very end just to keep the power going. Because, you know, if they if they just abandoned their posts, then the power would have gone off way sooner. Which would mean more chaos. Takes her final plunge. you down as you go down and then she's gone just like that one of the survivors once said that he thought that the scariest thing he ever heard was the screams that came after this, the, when the ship went down but he was wrong he said that the scariest thing was the silence that came after the screaming that just represents hundreds of people dying because they were left in the freezing waters. And I don't, 
I don't blame people for not coming back. Because if they did, then it would just... It would have probably killed more people, actually, because people would swarm the lifeboat, and it would probably capsize. It, sorry. Putting more people into the water. And they just didn't want to risk it. So, that's about all I'm going to do for this episode. Um, let's kind of close it off up here. So, um... So this episode was definitely more of a historical, um, I like to think that this is more of a historical video, uh, describing the events and stuff, but uh, in the future I might do like a kind of more role-playing focused video, this is more just showing you the game. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also do please hit that notification bell. Uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!